Hi, I'm Ashley. And I'm Bree. We're the PR team behind the theater downstream. For our sixth season, we wanted to get to know the people behind the characters. We wanted to get real. Today, we get to sit down with Juliana Daugherty, a fearless 16-year-old. Except when it comes to roller coasters. Who learned how to let herself go and use her knowledge of combat both on and off the stage. Welcome. Hello. Can you introduce yourself? Um, my name is Juliana Darty, and I play the role of Dylan Forrester. Very nice. And I would say, what is your day job? But you're a little young for a job. So what do you do during the day? Well, I actually do technically have a day job. I work at my dad's karate studio. Oh, nice. And I teach there. So yeah. Okay. And what is your age? I am 16. Going on 17? Going on 17, yes. Different show, different <laughs> show. What is the best part about helping your dad at the karate studio? Working with the kids. We have a lot of really good kids, and I really enjoy... I, I enjoy children in general, but mm-hmm. just the, the kids that we have are really, really good. What's the most interesting part of the job? Probably the kids, yeah, yeah. again. Yeah. yeah, they're just... Uh, they're different personalities and how they t- take to karate, and just uh, watching them grow is really, really cool and really fun. What is something that people may not know about karate? Like, what we know about karate is the Jackie Chan. Yeah. Movies, those kind of yeah. things. What is something that people may not know about karate? Um, well, the particular style that we do is, it's not it's not fighting, really. It is, but it's more of... Self-defense? Yeah, it is more self-defense, and it's um, like a code, and it's respect our skills and never dishonor yourself or your school by the improper use of these teachings, and it's it's more of like um, like a guideline for your life. I don't know. It's It's not just, okay, these are the moves, go ham. Mm-hmm. It's um, self-control and respect, and it's a lot more than just fighting. How long have you been doing it? I've been doing karate for two or three years. Well, you've you've advanced pretty quickly then, because you're pretty high up on the belts, aren't you? Um, like halfway through, yeah. Okay. For only two years, is, is that a fast track, or how long does it usually take? Um, it depends on what style. It takes four years in American karate to get your black belt. Okay. So. Is that what you're in? Uh, yeah, we do American karate, yeah. Okay. So you're about so you are right on track then. Pretty much, yeah. Okay, that's yeah. good. What is your dream job? My dream job. Oh goodness. At the moment, I'd love to be a chemist. Oh, nice. Mhm. So is there any chemists that you particularly look up to? No, not really. I just had done a little bit of chemistry a couple of years ago mm-hmm. in one of my sciences that I was doing and I just fell in love with it and I haven't studied up too much on it or the history or whatever but I just really enjoy what I've done what do you like about it I like knowing why and I also love physics I I just love science I think we need more women scientists yeah what is your home life like mom dad how many siblings what do we have at home I have seven going on eight siblings yes there's one in the cooker right now (laughs) (laughs) my I had a stay-at-home mom Mm -hmm. and just a lot of very loving siblings Mm -hmm. and we grew up basically outside our entire life a lot of bare feet (laughs) running around in the dirt and I don't know I just I had a very very fun childhood very wild adventurous it was it was so what was the what is the best part about coming from a large family Ooh, I don't know (laughs) I that's all I've ever known is a large family Mm -hmm. is Um, it kind of like having built-in best friends it really is yeah it is, and it's it's nice, and you have a very strong support system around you all the time, so that's good. So what would be uh, what would be a drawback from having a large family, or is there any in your mind? You're always used to having someone, mm-hmm. and so if you're put in a situation where you don't have someone... Mm. Mm. So maybe it's a little tougher for you to be independent? Yes. Because you're yeah. not used to being independent yet. Yeah, like doing theater for the first time. That was the first time that I've really done something, an activity that I did not have a sibling with me Mm. or I wasn't very close to home. So that was something very new for me. So what brought you into it then? I've always loved the arts Mm -hmm. and acting and everything like that. Y'all guys were doing Annie and Kevin, he came up to me at church and he was like, you should audition for the show. And I was like, Oh, I don't know. Like I'm really busy right now. I'm doing ranch and karate and all this other stuff. And he's like, you really should. It was just every week. (laughs) And then I did theater camp. Uh huh. <clears throat> I, I remember really, you played sadness. I did. I did. Yeah. And then I was at my friend's house, and my mom called me, and she was like, "Auditions are today. Do you want to go?" And I was like, "Okay, I guess I'll go." And uh-huh. I did, and I got. I was in the ensemble. So, mm-hmm. Hooverville. 
Mm -hmm. So you said you've always enjoyed acting, but if you hadn't really ever done it, how, how did you come to enjoy the acting part? before you were in your first show. Do you mean that you enjoyed watching people act? I would, and it was something yeah. that you wanted to try yourself or had you done some church acting? I had never done anything like church wise or anything acting before Annie. Mm -hmm. And it was more of like um playing Or before dress theater up. camp. So theater yeah. camp really would have been your yeah. that was the summer before Annie. Yeah. That right. was my first experience with doing anything theater, but like I've always wanted to be an actor, like on T V shows and mm -hmm. all that fun stuff. That always sounded or looked so cool playing in the backyard with my sister Grace. We were princesses and mm -hmm. we would have our own characters and it was, I guess that's, I don't know. Has it lived up to your expectations? Yes. Yeah, yeah I love it. Good. I love it. Do you have any other hobbies or hidden talents? Ooh, I don't know. I, I draw. Mm -hmm. I do a little bit of poetry. Not very much. A little bit. I used to do ballet when I was little. <laughs> that's a hidden talent. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah. That's good. So what is it that, what is it about acting that is so appealing to you? What is it about the process or what brings you to the world of acting? I don't know. I guess it's just getting to be somebody else, to be in like somebody else's world. That's what it was for me is getting to be someone that wasn't me because I was a very, very shy yeah. child. Yeah. So me for me, it was getting to be outside of myself. Mm -hmm. And I finally had to say... I had to make a con I remember making a conscious decision in about seventh grade to go, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. I need to get outside of myself. Yeah. And for acting, that is what helped me get outside of myself and to not be as shy. I still am to a certain extent, but it has caused me to get outside of myself. It's mm -hmm. caused me. And another thing that I always hated was conflict yes. and confrontation and talk about having to take care of conflict and confrontation being on the administrative side of theater, which is what I, where I found myself in the last several years, is that seems like all we're doing yeah. is, you know, resolving conflict. Some is some is minor, some is major in confrontation where you may have to talk to somebody about. Directing is kind of confrontation. You're saying, here's, here's how I would like you to play the role, but please don't hate me because yeah. I think you're amazing, but try this. Please don't hate me. You know, yeah. that, that kind of thing. I, I wrestle with that mm -hmm. is how can I lead them but not be mean about it. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Do you have anybody that you look up to right now as a director, writer, actor? Not really, no. I don't mm -hmm. follow a lot of celebrities or anything like that. I've never really been on a lot of social media or anything like that. I don't know. I love Harry Styles. <laughs> no, that's just like a typical white girl. Like, oh, I love Harry Styles. <laughs> but I do. Oh. <laughs> When I was wanting to act, and of course I didn't go to acting school, I didn't go to school mm -hmm. for acting, I didn't go to school for any of this, so when I was trying to learn to act, that's what I did is I watched movies. Yeah. And it wasn't necessarily for the movie stars, but I didn't watch modern movies as much as I watched classic Hollywood movies. Mm -hmm. I watched Jimmy Stewart. I watched Audrey Hepburn. I looked at these people that the world had said, these are the masters of acting. Catherine Hepburn, Cary Grant. Okay, what did they do? What were their techniques that made them so good? I would love to have the time back that I took as a teenager watching all, consuming all of these classic Hollywood films because they're really, they were in my, they were my instructors. This mm -hmm. is the high school. This is the acting school that I went to was the school of classic actors so mm -hmm. everything I learned I learned from these people so if you were interested in it not necessarily to worship the people but to look at the technique yeah what did they do and not just just watch the movie for itself but then go back and analyze so did you see how they move their head at this point did you see how they move their hands or their eyes or whatever and just look at their techniques mm. that's what I did yeah okay so let's talk about the show right all right if somebody said to you which they will because it's a new show so you're in a show, He Needed a Killing. What's it about? What would you say? Um, I've actually been asked that very recently. And it's just, it's a show about these five women who they meet up for a weekly bridge game and they're protecting each other mm -hmm. from this guy who needs killing. <laughs> it's a pretty <laughs> obvious, guys. Yeah. It's about a guy that needs to be killed. <clears throat> yeah. What do you think the themes are in the show? A lot of loyalty, a lot of mm -hmm. friendship and family, just a lot of loving each other. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite line or scene? Oh, gosh. I love Joan's line where 
and she's talking about um, her diet. She's like, I ate two raisins for breakfast, licked an avocado for lunch, and sobbed into a plate of steam for, at dinner just for the salt. I need substance. I need carbs. I feel Joan. Oh, I love I feel that you, line. That's pretty much my diet. Mm. The carbs part. Yeah. Not the other part. Not the not eating part, but the carbs part. That's what I live on. How do you feel about Frank as a villain? Do you think he's a caricature? Do you think he's believable? Do you know anyone like him without naming names? I, I know somebody, yeah, somebody like him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know him personally, mm-hmm. but I do know somebody like him. He is a very believable villain, yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I said this before in Nancy's, but when we wrote it, sometimes we thought, is this too is this too caricaturish? Is this taking it too far? But then e- even post-writing it, we would, we would hear people talk about people that they knew. Or for me, I listen to a lot of podcasts, as you guys know. I would listen to podcasts, and I would think, oh my goodness, we did not take this further. I think if I could go back, I would maybe tweak a few things that I could make it even more believable. But I think he's pretty believable as he is. I I didn't believe that he was at first. I thought it was too cartoonish. But now hearing people who have seen it tell us that, no, you guys have done an amazing job of making this person someone that I know. Mm -hmm. How do you think that you would react if Luetta was your best friend? If she was my best friend. Um, I don't know you don't really have the same kind of... Be, being younger, it would be probably in a dating situation mm-hmm. where you would have a best friend who is dating someone like Frank. Yeah. So how do you think you would react? How do you think you would react and how do you wish you would react? If Luetta was my friend, I probably would have confronted her about it mm-hmm. earlier on. Mm-hmm. Just tried to support her and give her as much advice as I could. And if, if she so wished to help her out of the situation as best as I could. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, I'm 16-year-old. What can I do? <laughs> but I could try. Why do you think that the ladies don't confront her in the play? I feel like they think that she just needs some normalcy. Mm-hmm. And they don't want... Like, that is where she can be safe and mm-hmm. escape. And she mm-hmm. they don't want Frank transferring into that group. It's like, that is, that is where she can just be her mm-hmm. and not have to worry about Frank, I feel. Why did you want to be a part of this production? I remember I was talking to my friend... And I was reading up on the audition, and I saw Dylan, and I was reading through her profile, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is, like, similar to me. I kind of, I kind of want to do this. And I was like, oh, I'm 16, and she's 21. Like, how is that going to work? But, I mean, here I am, Mm -hmm. and I was, I don't know, I just kind of felt like I related to her a little Mm -hmm. bit, so. Mm -hmm. And I think as far as 16 versus 21, as long as you look 21, your height Mm -hmm. helps you. Because height tends to make you look older. Yes. So if you have somebody who's four foot eleven and sixteen years old, that helps them if they're wanting to play someone who is fourteen, yeah, twelve, something like that. They can do things like that. But in your mm-hmm. case, being taller, I was tall when I was sixteen. I was this height, I think, at twelve. So I was able to play older, even if I, well, I didn't act. But if I had, I would have played older than I actually was. Yeah. So it's the same thing for you. Don't ever discount just because you are an age, if the other age asked for a stage age, then you can still play it. I played a 27-year-old when I was, what, 36? So, you can do it. Yeah. It's it's all illusion. <laughs> what was challenging for you about bringing the script or, or this character, Dylan, particularly to life? I guess just the fact that I've never done this before. Mm-hmm. I've only ever been an ensemble member mm-hmm. or a mm-hmm. dance troupe or whatever. And I never, I've never actually had to be a character Mm -hmm. and that was that was challenging and I didn't know what to do really Mm -hmm. and that almost made me change my mind about auditioning I was Mm -hmm. like I've never done this before like this is like I don't know what to expect I've never like nobody's it is new like Mm -hmm. I don't have anything to base my character off of Mm -hmm. except for the script and I didn't get a chance to read the script before Mm -hmm. auditions but I tell you we never would have known I mean (laughs) honestly after afterwards mom co-writers my mother she asked me, did she get a chance to read the script? And I said, no, you know, she was going at it cold because uh, what people may not realize is we made the script available if anyone wanted to read it because we knew it was a new property. Mm -hmm. So if anybody wanted to read it, we had some loaner copies that we were circulating and we were saying, hey, you know, we we know you're getting ready to put your your time into something you've never read, so read it first and see if you really want to be a part of it. And she was convinced that you had. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. She thought that that you had gotten a chance to No, she came at it from never knowing it. So you're very natural. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. How has it felt then coming from ensemble to a uh, supporting character? What has been a change for you? Obviously more lines. Yeah, a lot more lines, a lot more lines. Um, 
never really done that much blocking either. Oh, that is, okay. I, if I was on stage, I was dancing or mm -hmm. standing next to a piano or mm -hmm. something like that. I didn't really have to move around on stage very much. And just actually having a stage presence. Mm -hmm. And, like, if I'm on stage, I have to be my character the whole time. Mm -hmm. I'm on for, like, five seconds and then I go off. And it, it's... So has that been the biggest difference between a straight show and a musical for you? Yes. Yeah, I've never done a straight show either, so... Well, you're having all kinds of firsts. Yeah, all kinds of firsts. Has it been scary or intimidating, or have you felt comfortable? What's been your feeling during um, this? Going into it in, like, the very first couple of rehearsals, I was very intimidated and, like, I don't know what to expect, really. I mean, kind of. Still similar, but a little bit different at the same time, doing a musical and a straight play. And I was I was intimidated and a little bit nervous, but I'm more comfortable doing it now. Good. What changed, do you think? And it wasn't really as different as I thought it was going to be. Mm hmm it's just a lot less singing and dancing. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. What do you think the audience is going to be thinking about in the car as they drive home from the show? What a jerk Frank is. That's what I would be thinking. <laughs> Boy, he needed killing. <laughs> yeah, he really did. He really did. What a fitting title. Yes. Yeah. They, they named that right. <laughs> Who do you think in the show is the most like their character? The most like their character? Ruth? Yeah. For sure. Oh, everybody is so much like their character in certain ways, and then there's a few who are very much not like their character, mm -hmm. but still have some similarities. But Ruth, for sure, is the one that is most like her character. Mm -hmm. Who do you think is the least like their character? Not in acting-wise, but, like, this is not their personality. Yeah. Frank, for sure. Well, yeah, he, he <laughs> appreciates sure. that. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, Frank and Melissa. Yes, mm -hmm. I, would, I would agree with Melissa, for sure. Yeah. I knew we would need a really strong actor for Melissa. Yes. And I think we have one. Yes. How are you and Dylan similar? Karate, obviously. <laughs> yes, karate. That that was helpful to already know that. Which I guess minor spoiler, Dylan gets to use her karate skills at yes. some point. Hey, yeah. know that. We just know that she knows. Yeah. Karate. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> There's some things that Dylan says that I I know that I would say something like that too. Like what? Like her line feel significantly less like garbage and more like leftover pizza. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that is breezed. Is that your favorite that line? Is, if, if not my favorite, then it's it's getting there. Actually, the reason she loves it so much is it's a true exchange that happened to be between myself and her. Really? I was so sick and I don't remember from what, but I had some kind of sinus or cold or mm. something. And she asked me how I was feeling today. And I just said that. It just came out. I said, I'm feeling significantly less like garbage and more like leftover pizza. And we both just started laughing. Mm. So I put so it in the play as a, yeah. Uh -huh, I, remember I this? Remember when line. I was dying and we laughed about it? <laughs> yeah, that's one of my favorites. And that's yeah. something that I would say, too. Yeah. So. Well, you know my favorite. You know my favorite Dylan lines I do, every yeah. night. Of course they know which ones they are. I'm like, this is so funny. Uh, it's to be frank mm -hmm. and also what's the other one well his one? voice is lower. well his voice <laughs> is lower yes I think well, I think one line that I feel like is definitely you is when she says and Frank will be dead which, <laughs> which would make, would me, make happy. me happy yeah <laughs> how are you different from Dylan Dylan is I feel like Dylan's just a cool 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 cucumber I'd like to be Dylan I know yeah I think I'd like to be Dylan I feel like she has everything under control mm -hmm. she's very confident she is she's yeah. comfortable in her own skin mm -hmm. she knows who she is and that's who she is yeah yeah I like having a young person feel that way mm -hmm. that is young and confident and not insecure which is the way I yeah. feel most of the time yeah me too me too yeah. so that's that's nice for me I like to like oh I'm confident now yeah. <laughs> I feel like Dylan is what I'm always trying to be yeah because like we're even in the same field mm -hmm. kind of thing. So I feel like Dylan is definitely like, I'm always trying to be that. Person. Well, maybe mm -hmm. she will help you become more confident. I'd like that. That's yes. happened for me. I've, I've played characters who were nothing like me. Mm -hmm. I didn't think they helped me find a piece of, they made me different in that I took on some of their character traits, mm -hmm. you know? So if they yeah. were brave and strong, then playing them, I felt brave and strong and it made me in my real life braver and stronger yeah so maybe yeah. that'll translate for you too i hope so yeah i would i would very much like that <laughs> what do you love about her i love her sense of style mm -hmm. like, i like mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. combat boots all the way mm -hmm. i love that yeah if you could say that she had a flaw what would it be 
I don't know. I'm trying to think of that too. I wonder if I would say that she's she is a little too trusting. I feel like she is, yeah. Because she did just meet this in the course of the show. She meets a stranger in a bar, mm-hmm. and he tells her this wild, fanciful story, and she just believes it. And like, yeah. yeah, let's meet up. Yeah. yeah, tell me, tell me about your life. And she is a little cautious because she never leaves mm-hmm. the bar, but she's she's a little trusting. Yeah, a little too trusting. And I think that because she is so confident, she's like mm-hmm. uh, a little on the okay. cocky side. Yeah, it's a little yeah. bit. Like, I nothing could ever happen to me. That yeah. youthful. Oh, I'm never gonna indestructible. Yeah. Yes. Besides not including yourself, what actor do you think in the show is going to blow people away with their performance? Who do you enjoy watching? I love watching Melissa. Yeah. She's just so fun to watch. And I love uh, Luetta Mm -hmm. as well. Luetta's performance is very understated. She is. Yeah. But she's someone that has to do a lot with looks and expression. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Mandy is really, really nailing that. Yeah, she's doing really, really good. I'm proud of her. Without giving anything away, this is what I'm not sure if we've already answered this, some moment that every night you're looking forward to, either hearing or performing. I love in the party scene. I don't know why I love this so much, but when when Joan is talking to Mrs. Fabato, she's like, this is how you um, scare somebody away at a party. Yes. (laughs) I love that. That is pretty funny. What is rewarding or positive about working with an original script do you think i feel like i if i needed to i could ask you Mm -hmm. about anything and you would know exactly how i should do it or Mm -hmm. give me advice on how to say something or like what i don't know how to that would that would be that would be actually with any director yeah so what is i think maybe what is different for us with the original script is that's a relationship you should be able to have with any director. Yeah. If you have a non-original, or, I mean, everything was original at one time, mm-hmm. but if it's been performed, is you should be able to go to your director and say, what does this mean, or what is that? Yeah. I think something different for us is that you are helping to form who she is. Yeah, that's so, intimidating. <laughs> well, it's also exciting, because yeah. you're helping you're helping with the dialogue you're Mm -hmm. helping with what do we need to cut what do we need to keep you're helping to formulate who this character will be for other actors yeah so i think that's something different with an it is it is yeah so what do you feel like is challenging about working with it is it the intimidation yeah it's it's very intimidating for me oh gosh like i have to get this right because it's like the first time that anybody's ever gonna see it but they won't have any preconceived notions no no they won't so whatever you do they'll be like oh that was intentional yeah so you don't need to be intimidated yeah. by it because whatever you do just do it with confidence like yeah, i meant to do that yes <laughs> that's exactly what dylan was supposed to do in that moment trips going down the stairs with yeah. talking to then land. john and ruth <laughs> <laughs> if this if this show gets turned into a movie just big dreams who do you think should play dylan i don't know as i said earlier i don't really keep up with a lot of celebrities especially not ones that are your age yeah who would you say brie i did have someone in mind lily reinhardt lily reinhardt i was thinking her she's very dylan yeah do you know who yeah. i'm talking about Mm-mm. she plays betty cooper in riverdale yeah oh that i don't watch that okay well i am a betty i'm mm-hmm. a fan of betty i'm not a veronica fan i am oh, a betty yeah, fan. i don't like well, veronica. she's very she's very she likes veronica true to really <laughs> she is a Veronica. Just, We're definitely yeah. Bettys. Yeah. What has been fun about being in a scene with somebody? So when you're acting with someone on stage, what do you what do you appreciate if the other actor does? Um, do you like eye contact? Do you like feel good when they anticipate a move? Do you like how do you feel acting with people? I don't really know. I just kind of go with the flow. <laughs> She likes improv. Yeah, I do. Mm-hmm. I, I love doing improv. So you like a person who can flow with the scene with you, though. Mm-hmm. So if something doesn't go as planned, there's some actors, you will find, that they have to do it the way it's written. Yeah. They cannot deviate. Mm-hmm. And even if you say the wrong word, if it's a wrong cue line, they can't do it. Yeah. So there's there's a place for those kind of people, and I would say those that's fine. Mm-hmm. But there are other people who just say the gist of a line. Yeah. And they get the meaning out there, which that's you shouldn't do that. You should say what the writer says, but yeah. some they don't do that. That's fine too. It's just different performances. Yeah. You would like probably a middle ground. Yeah. Of if one night something goes off the rails and I say something wrong, I need somebody who's up there with me who can kind of pick it up and go mm-hmm. with me. That would make sense. Do you have a favorite stage show besides this one? Of mm. course. Can it be a musical? Sure. I love Newsies. Mm-hmm. And I love Rent. Mm. Those are you got yeah. to see Rent, didn't you? I did, yes. And Newsies actually. Oh you did. How did you mm-hmm. how did you like it? It was really, really good. I really enjoyed it. It was at the Derby Dinner Theater. Oh, you saw that one there? Mm-hmm. Okay. Nice. Let's see, your first performance, would that have been theater camp? Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Have you have you acted enough that you could say, here are my strengths, here are my weaknesses? Not really. Are you still formulating those? Yeah. I think one of your strengths is your natural. You're very, very natural. Well, you just you. come to it and you just are the person. Mm. I think that's really natural. And I like, I think you're also going to develop and be very strong at facial expressions. Mm. Because especially when you're on the couch and Frank comes over to you and is creeping you out. Yeah. The the acting with your eyes that, that you that's, were doing that's is... All, <laughs> that's, that's all real. real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we forgot about Joan. That's really good. Oh, oh yes. Oh, I love that. Yes. And running up and down the stairs. I think as you grow, your comic timing is just going to get better and better. Because mm. I see a lot of really natural comic timing from you where I don't have to really adjust at all. It's just like, just let her go. Just wind her up and let her go. <laughs> So you're, well, you're doing you. really well. You're thank coming you. very naturally to it. What's the last thing you do before you go on stage? Or what do you have as a pre-show routine? Um, I don't really have a pre-show routine. I don't know. Mine is prayer and crying. <laughs> no, not the crying. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, I typically stretch, actually. Mm, that's good. Do you give yourself any kind of pep talk? No, I'm not really a pep talk person. You're just a go out and do it kind of person. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, mine is usually I sit there and I think to myself, why did I do this? <laughs> why am I going to do this? But if I'm going to do this, I can do this because if Joan of Arc can lead an army at the age of 17, surely you can walk out there and say some lines. Yeah. If she can be brave enough to lead an entire army then you can get your butt out there and say a line and not pass out from anxiety. <laughs> yeah. So get yourself together. Mine's more of an angry pep mm -hmm. talk. <laughs> like, yeah. you idiot. <laughs> you idiot. Get out there. Do you look up to anybody as an actor, director, writer, etc.? I actually, I really looked up to Elizabeth. Yeah? Mm, yeah. I loved watching her act. Oh, yeah. You got to see something's afoot every I night. I did, yes. And She's I, amazing. I saw Mary Poppins. Oh, and, true. Um, what was she? She was... Bell, yes, yes. Bell. Sleeping Beauty. Did you get to s nope? Being that's ah, uh, my word. What's wrong with my brain? It's too early. <laughs> <laughs> it's like two thirty, guys. Yeah, it's too early. early. <laughs> it's too early. Yes. What do you spend your five minute rehearsal breaks doing? Uh, drinking water. Oh, I was like drinking. Truly, <laughs> <laughs> drinking water and Ooh. or lemonade, whichever one I bring. What is your favorite meal? My favorite meal. I love broccoli cheddar soup from Panera Bread. Solid. It's really good. My stomach just grumbled when you saying <laughs> that. Did you hear that? Like, that no, it was me. <laughs> what do you think is the most quotable movie? Princess Bride. Ooh, good. Good choice. <laughs> we can keep this one. Yeah, we can keep it. <laughs> yes. We can keep her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> keep her keep. What's your favorite line from Princess Bride, or can you pick one? Oh, gosh. I love, and it's, it's kind of a, a joke in my family. It's the, I'm not a witch, I'm your wife. Because <laughs> we were watching it, and... Um, she said that line, and my sister Madeline turned to my sister Grace, and she goes, that's what you're going to have to constantly tell your husband. <laughs> <laughs> that's mean. That's definitely a sister thing to say. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Together. 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 Today. Yes. What? what is the best book you've read lately? Do you lately, read books? I, I love reading books. The I read Turtles All the Way Down. I really like that one. What's that about? It's about this girl, and she has she has this friend, and they, she was friends with him like a long time ago. And he, his father just went missing. And so there's this reward for his father because he went missing right before his, like, court date for something because he's in trouble legally. I don't remember why because I read it in the day and I kind of forgot. Like, it didn't have... Who wrote it? Uh, John Green. I was thinking it sounded mm -hmm. like a John Green. Yeah. But they, like, fall in love. And in the beginning, he thinks that uh, she's only hanging out with him because she wants the reward money. But that's... She wants to find his dad for him. Mm -hmm. And he thinks it's just for the money. Because she wants a reward. She truly loves him. Love. Mm. True, True love. love. <laughs> what was your favorite cartoon as a kid? It wasn't fully cartoon, but I loved Zubumafu. I've never heard of that. Really? I'm really? older than you all. No, I'm like a million years older than you. Like what is half of it was uh, animated. But was there real people? Mm, there was real people in it. It was the... The Crass Brothers or... The Krat. Like the with a T. Yeah. yeah. What was it about? They would go on these adventures with their lemur friend. They were like animal... They would go on safaris yeah. a lot. Yeah. Like, it's really cool. Yeah, and now, there, now there's a full animated TV show about it. Yeah, it's just the crap. Yeah. yeah. Because the movie who died. Yeah. The actual lemur. He died. Yeah. No! In real life? Yeah. Mm. He was a real lemur? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That's sad. 
That took a turn. <laughs> that took a sad turn. So what is your, do you have a favorite TV show now? Right now, it's Supernatural. Oh, nice. Mm. So do you like Supernatural things? Not really. I just, I love the show, though. I'm, I'm scared of Supernatural things. <laughs> if you could have any animal as a pet, not counting a dog or cat, something totally different, what animal would you pick? It's not very exotic, but a horse. Well, that's all right. That is all right. They're a little big for me. Mm. I need to either like a giant animal or a tiny one. You can get a miniature horse. That's true. I'd be okay with that. Dogs. See, I have a little thing with horses because when like when I was littler, he I sat on him and he mm-hmm. thought he was a dog, so he just rolled over and oh, I fell off. You have to get right back on the horse. I did. It's the only though. way you get over the fear. <laughs> yeah. I said, okay, you chose, and now I'm gonna have a life of anxiety. There we go. <laughs> See, I got I was riding on this horse, and it decided that it wanted to start bucking. Oh no! So it bucked me off and then kicked me midair. <laughs> Is that, like, the scariest thing that's ever happened to you? Um, no. What's the scariest thing that's ever happened to you? I went on a roller coaster. You you went on a roller coaster? Yeah, it was okay. terrifying. Oh, yeah, no. Absolutely terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, horse my friend... Horse? Yeah, my friends tricked me onto it. Onto it the was, roller coaster to go yeah. upside down? Yes. Nope. Oh. Uh, nope, It was, nope, like, nope, nope. pitch black and alien-themed, and you couldn't see it. Mm-mm. My friend told me it just went really fast, straight Mm-mm. forward, Mm-mm. and I fell for it. <laughs> see, I get terrible motion sickness. Mm. So, Brian, in his wisdom said we were at Disney World and he says let's go on Mission Space Orange and I don't know if you know anything about that Mission Mm. Space Green is we're just gonna simulate the stuff Mm. Mission Space Orange is where you get on it and it spins you like a top so the whole time there's signs if you get motion sickness turn back now and he's like no it's gonna not gonna be that bad surely it's not gonna be that bad and then he says I'm like I don't want to do this I don't want to do this he says you know what just close your eyes I thought, okay. <laughs> we get in. They strap us in. The last thing they say before they start this machine of monstrosity is, whatever you do, don't close your eyes. And it was like 90 seconds, however long those rides are, of an eternity of me feeling like I'm going to vomit everywhere. Uh, we get off. I'm like green and sweating. <laughs> he feels so bad, but also laughing just a little bit, you well, know? Yeah. <laughs> 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 just like that's it it's over <laughs> no i was so sick um, but he did feel bad and so that's like our thing if he doesn't ever have to make me do anything ride wise ever again mm. when there are a ton of red flags but your favorite color is red <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh gosh yeah they they were like oh I'll just go in a few it'll be fine and then they're like get on this last one by the end of the day i didn't have any voice from screaming? Yeah. we were. My, my sister Madeline and I rode in the third row, and then they sent our other friend to the very back. Mm-hmm. And she said that she could hear my screams <laughs> all the way from the very, very back of this roller coaster ride. And, oh my gosh, I went on this one, and the people in front of me, when the ride stopped, they turned around and were like, are you okay? <laughs> and Madeline was like, I now know what you're going to sound like when you're getting murdered. <laughs> <laughs> like that's great. <laughs> this way you don't take me on roller coasters. There was another ride that we went on. This poor child. Who knows what her life is going to be like? But we went on <laughs> this ride, and I liked it because it was a Range Rover, and it was it's called Dinosaur, and it's at Disney World, of mm-hmm. course. This is about dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah, it's about dinosaurs. So we go on this ride, and it's a it's a Range Rover thing. So you're going in this, and it's dark, and they have all these dinosaurs like pop out. And there's mm. this one that it pop. You stop, and of course it pops out. It's right over you, and it roars, it scares the crap out of you. <laughs> so you know, in all the pictures, I'm like in a ball, a fetal ball. <laughs> but this little twelve year old girl, after she got off the ride, I'll never forget. She looks at her parents, and she goes, "Never again, <laughs> never ever ever again." And she was just a mess. And I'm <laughs> I said, I feel you, girl. But I actually liked it. Because as long as it didn't go upside down. And, yeah. I mean, it terrified me, but it was a fun kind of terrified. Yeah. I wasn't, I, but the first time I wrote it, I wasn't positive that it wasn't real. <laughs> it was just like, <laughs> I know, I know this isn't real, mm-hmm. but I'm not sure <laughs> that it is Disney Magic. <laughs> Maybe in this one moment they have trained a dinosaur because I don't know what Disney's up to. <laughs> how to train your dinosaur? <laughs> yeah, how to train your dinosaur part two, Disney version. But yeah, I can understand her pain. Mm. Poor girl. I hope you're okay out there. Oh golly. Do you have any historical heroes? Mm, not really. We gotta develop your mind. <laughs> We get a whole lot of, not really. I don't know. Supernatural beings. <laughs> or Ingles? I don't know. I've always loved her and her books and stuff. Coke or Pepsi? Coke. If you could live in any decade, any time period, what would it be? Like a Pride and Prejudice era. Oh, whatever okay. Whatever that's called. Okay. Yeah. 
I had the word for it earlier, and now I can't remember it. <laughs> what would it be um, called? I'm sure people listening are like, you idiots. <laughs> <laughs> the Bride of, the um, Bennett's, the Bennett era. Mm-hmm. You know, Benedictine era. Pride and Prejudice era. Um, I've always loved that. And I, I've always loved those movies and all the, mm-hmm. like, the books. And um, that's that's my favorite. Very romantical. Mm-hmm. So is Mr. Darcy your kind of man? Um, I feel like Mr. Bingley is more my type of man. Mr. Bingley. Mis- Mr. Darcy is reserved for Sister Grace. <laughs> oh, I see. She put her stamp on it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's cute. What is your best advice for other actors or other people who want to be an actor? Somebody who's in your position that's just always wanted to do this. Don't overthink it. Just do it. Mm-hmm. Try. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. Because just think if you hadn't come to auditions, you wouldn't be here. No, I wouldn't. Yeah. If you could tell the child version of yourself, which wasn't that many years ago. No. <laughs> so if you could tell the child, like maybe last year, if you could talk to last year Julie, last what year would Julie. you tell her? Or let's go with ten, let's go with ten year old Julie. Ten year old Julie. Um, it'll all come out all right in the end. It'll be okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Last question. Okay. If you knew you could not fail, what would you do? I don't know. I'd probably do something very dangerous <laughs> just because i can but not ride a roller coaster uh no no i'm done with that no <laughs> i've done it like three times and i'm good climb mount everest that'd be fun if you knew you wouldn't drop dead at the top yeah <laughs> yeah which happens yes i've yeah. seen shows about that and mm-hmm. i'm like mm, why that's a good answer so make that more metaphorical for your life mm. climb those mountains yeah try mm-hmm. one foot at a time yep. one step at a time you can do it. That's your motivation. Just go back yes. when you're feeling low. Go back and listen to you can do it. <laughs> Any Is there anything that I haven't asked or anything you want to talk about as far as the show goes? Anything you want to leave the, the folks at home with? Come see the show, right? Yeah. Come see me kick butt. That's right. She does, too. She's a hero. Yeah. In that one scene, I'm like, go, Dylan, go. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, All right, Julie, thank you very much. You're welcome. Join us next time for our conversation with Mandy Glauber. Mandy talks about her life as an award-winning dancer, how life changes with loss, and which actor she still can't believe she gets to share the stage with. He Need a Killin' opens July 26th and runs through August 4th. General tickets are available July 1st, 2019 at www.thetheaterdownstream.com. Special thanks to Juliana Daugherty for appearing today on Getting Real, and to the sponsors of He Need a Killin', Cedar Lake, Starview Greenhouses, and United Citizens Bank and Trust. This episode of Getting Real was executive produced, hosted, written, and edited by me, Ashley Raymer Brown. It was produced and co written by me, Bree Haishu. Sound design by Josh Martin. Music was provided by Final Cut Pro, and artwork was created by Ashley Raymer Brown. That's me. And Bree Haishu. That's me. Getting Real is a separate entity from the theater downstream. The thoughts and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not reflect the thoughts and opinions of the theater downstream. Thanks for listening. Um. Oh, Debris just burped. We were trying to record. Get in here. So I, I didn't can... know I was coming. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Bree. <laughs> you messed it up. <laughs> Those cokes will do it to you. Yeah. I was just like, Walking and then all the <laughs> Okay. I don't know. I've always loved her and her books and stuff. That's good. Oh, look, it's a cat. Free <laughs> 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 show ritual. <laughs> it was a little bit like. I just felt my heart go. <laughs> oh, man. Stop staring at me like that. You should take a picture of her through the window. So when, if someone asks, like, what's the scariest thing that's ever happened to you? Roxy. <laughs> Roxy. Oh, jo- goodness. Because she's, like, six feet high. Roxy. Oh, meow. she can't hear you. <laughs> it's through a window. Oh, you terrifying devil. <laughs> she is a devil. My cats used to do that in the pitch black, too. So you, all you'd see is their <laughs> glowing eyeballs. <laughs> Two-faced, blow-hard jerk, Luetta, a 
as lovely as a dream And why she married him is lost on us all And why she stuck around was hard to say Luetta is too kind to ever say a word And Frank wouldn't listen anyway Show is about. 